Good afternoon and thanks for joining us in this edition of uh, 360 Degrees and we are discussing some boiling issues uh, uh, today. Uh, we look at uh, the baby theft at uh, the Ekumdum Baptist Hospital uh, that kept uh, tongues waxing throughout the week. Uh, we are asking questions. How secured our uh, our health facilities and what are some of the precautionary measures to be taken? to be able to curb the phenomenon which is uh, on a steady rise. Plus, we shall be looking at uh, the population of sub uh, in Nju subdivision of uh, Donga Mountain Division of the Northwest region, the population that uh, have been under attack this week uh, by presumed herdsmen. We shall be trying to understand the conflict and of course, providing solutions, as well as looking at other communities in the Northwest that have been uh, in, contact attack, in constant attack uh, by uh, herdsmen, uh, which in some cases, uh, farmer grazer conflicts getting in to upset the population and the cohabitation of the uh, Christians and the Muslims. You are watching 360 Degrees, and we are booming live from uh, the Yupwe Economic Capital Dwala. Do not move a muzzle. Sit tight as we communion for the next one hour. welcome back just to indicate that we are equally live on facebook just type uh, canada international on facebook and you'll be uh, in our company throughout uh, this uh, uh, program uh, i have some four gentlemen in the studio where we shall be going straight to meet uh, we'll begin from uh, my left we have uh, uh our mikapa <laughs> The name is always, it always uh, melody when I'm going <laughs> to pronounce it. So, uh, Awa is a journalist here in Douala who works with uh, Radio Bonaberry. Welcome. Thank you very much, Hyson. Mm. Uh, good afternoon to our audience, and it's a pleasure to be here again. Thank you so much. And by you, we have uh, Dr. Ako John Ako, who is a political analyst. He has been here several times, and he's here today again to share his expertise on uh, today's topic. You're welcome, Doc. Yeah, the pleasure is mine once more again on being on at Canal de International. And many Cameroonians are hoping that the Lord should change land tenure and many other inconveniences and that conflicts are permanent mm. sea of human societies. And when they come, we simply can manage and we might not completely eradicate conflicts. Mm. So we have a duty to resolve the problems of the land tenure and land management, graziers and farmers all having such conflicts, mm. others by historically being in search of quest and again climate change a lot of that has been what is affecting farmers and grazing lands mm. but then many people always think that is a human problem it is equally to tell us that climate change is real and its impact are well felt thank you so much doc uh, by my right i have uh, a usual face as well uh, and the woman manuel is of the civil society thanks again for honoring our invitation yeah, uh, it's a pleasure once more to renew my confidence on this platform and uh, to the viewers of uh, 360 degree. It's always a pleasure to be here. I greet the level-headed panelists that are going to be dissecting the topic that is at hand mm. this afternoon. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And uh, by Emmanuel, we have uh, time for me, Fanka Samuel. I want to believe Ta is a traditional title, sir. Exactly. Yes, this is your first time on this set. Yes. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you, uh, sir and Mr. Hysen, uh, my co-panelist. I'm happy to have us here, but I want to guide us that uh, what is happening in SOP is not a uh, farmer gracious land dispute. Mm, we shall get to that. It is beyond that. Mm, we shall get to that. We shall... Not, it should not be taken as if it is a... Uh, uh, conflict between communities now. Of course. Yeah. We shall get to that. Just to indicate that he is a coordinator of Ideal Solutions for Community Communication. Yes. Yes. So, uh, you permit us, a lot happened this week, like we earlier uh, indicated. Let's just take uh, some few reports that uh, the newsroom uh, prepared this week. 
c'est le contrat le plus lucratif jamais signé. According par la to the statement, the Cameroon Football Federation attaches great importance to the proper execution of contractual commitments freely entered into by the parties involved. This is why it has decided to terminate the contract, thus bringing an end to the partnership with the equipment manufacturer. Meantime, Faker Food Space specifies that Cameroon's national soccer teams will be wearing the one all sports jerseys and other products for the last time during competition scheduled for September this year. It should be recalled that one all sports, the equipment manufacturer based in Bangkok, Thailand, arrived in Cameroon in 2022 to make up for the shortcomings observed in the operations of the former sportswear supplier Lecoq Sportive. Barely two years into the collaboration with Faker Food, the company has apparently shown its own limitations obliging the contract termination. A violent confrontation erupted in Magba on August 8 as Bamun and Tikar communities clashed, resulting in several injuries and heightened tensions. The unrest began when the Public Security Commissioner announced the cancellation of the Ngwon Festival. Allegedly, on the instructions of the West Region Governor, the Bamun community, feeling disrespected, erected barricades and refused to disperse, leading to a 40-minute standoff with security forces. As the situation escalated, a group from the Tikar chiefdom of Magbatu opened fire on the Bamun demonstrators, seriously injuring four people. The violence was eventually brought under control with the arrival of the additional security forces around 8 p.m. However, the incident highlights deep-seated tensions between ethnic groups in the region, with some refusing to participate in the Nguan Festival or recognize the Noon Department's authority. Despite King Nabil's calls for calm and appeasement, young Bamoon citizens were seen preparing to confront those they perceive as enemies of peace. The monarch's efforts to promote interculturality through the festival seem to have been undermined by the violence, raising concerns about the future of peaceful coexistence in the region. Two days gone, the father of the newborn baby that disappeared at the Baptist Hospital Ekundum without trace, only in tears. Like wife, they want the nightmare to stop for them to see their baby. Since that fateful Saturday, no sleep, no peace, but hope beyond hope. The father of the missing girl had brought some lawyers into the matter. Uh, from what we heard to the director, they are not so clear, information are not so clear. So we came with a belief to do all, all due consultation. So we are done and we still have to do our job as a lawyer, maybe to support uh, investigation that are going on. And the civil responsibility of, the, of this hospital is also engaged in this, uh, in this sad situation. Thinking the surveillance camera could be of help, they were made to understand that not all are functioning. Investigative hearing anyway has begun, especially as all those who were in charge or were working from the day she came in till the time the baby disappeared, Saturday at 7 p.m. We have heard and we have heard that she was in the cell. And well, we have not had a chance. Up to now, we have not had a chance. We have no information that has not come. Together and see how to pin the supposed person or persons involved. The husband like wife after this sad incident are trying to pin some of the actions from after delivery to the waiting room and all that seems kind of conspiracy. Sub-village in the Ndu subdivision of Ndongamantung Division, a small community in Cameroon, has been under siege for the past seven days, as presumed Fulani militants continue their reign of terror. 
the latest attack, which occurred on the night of August 6, breaking 7, 2024, claimed the life of Shea Alidu, who was shot and butchered to death. This gruesome murder follows the death of Shea Ba, who was burnt alive in his home on July 37, 2024, and the brutal attack on Kate Paul, who was stabbed and shot in the shoulder. A pregnant woman by name Quimsa Annie was severely beaten and is currently receiving treatment at Baptist Hospital in Du. The militants have also destroyed property, burning down houses and a grinding mill and looting seven stores. A barber shop and a phone store were also broken into with valuables stolen. The windows and glasses of a car were shattered, leaving the owner with significant losses. The people of Sub Village have had enough and are crying out for help. They are calling on the administration and the general public to intervene and bring peace and security back to their community. Welcome back. Uh, we begin with uh, the situation of the baby in Yaoundé. Thanking God that uh, she was found uh, after everything. Uh, Jiwum Emmanuel, despite the fact that the baby was uh, recovered from uh, the supposed thief, what is your reading of uh, the situation? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you see, Cameroon is living in security in all, its, uh, all the facets of its life. Mm. You will bear with me that there are certain areas that some happenings should not uh, take place there. I want to start by talking about the security situation of hospitals in this country. Mm. Without citing the name of the hospital, but if you visit my Facebook page, you will see that it's been there for two weeks. Mm. You will bear with me. I visited a hospital here in Douala. Uh, from the first phase, mm. I was very happy about the security situation, mm. thinking that uh, asking ID cards, asking people to queer up in the line, Mm. was uh, a security a, measure. Was a security measure. Mm. Uh, but I later on discovered right in front of me that it was a way of making money by the security uh, agents mm. who are at the gate of that hospital, a very big hospital uh, for that matter. Mm. I said, government hospital, let's, let's be pre let me be precise with that. Mm. And they make it in such a way that if you get tired in the line, you give either 1,000 francs you give 500 francs, you get inside. Mm. And you will bear with me that this thing has been very recurrent in Cameroon because just imagine I'm a thief. I have to get into the hospital mm. and I pay 1,000 francs. I get my access into the hospital. Just imagine what can happen inside. Away from that, you equally understand that there are a lot of things that have been happening in Cameroon in the name of administrative tolerance. Mm. You see men working in Kaba, you call them comedians. These are the kind of people who <laughs> perpetrate such acts mm. and go uh, uh, scot-free. Mm. And because you see them making as if they were comedians and then people are laughing, I want to think the security dispositions of this country need to sit up. Security of this country should not only be perfect at the level of e to d Mm. I mean, at the level of every structure in this country, especially the hospitals and the schools, security needs to be stepped up. Mm. Because you look at, this thing has been happening now for a number of years, but I've not actually seen how the government has been able to come up clearly to say this is exactly the government plan in curbing such a thing. Mm. And if such things are not done, I want to tell you, in the days ahead, it might multiply. Mm. And before you take the microphone, yeah. the scenario of some people buying children who mm. are still in the homes of some youths, as a civil society, I know what I'm talking about, mm. paying children to take in so that they give birth and sell the children to them is almost also on the rise in Cameroon. The authorities in place need to sit up and check on this scenario. Uh, a time for me. As a, as a parent, like we saw there, this could be very frustrating. I think uh, we are in a stage that people are so frustrated and uh, suffocated 
And this is due to what? Lack of employment, you know, and it has caused us a lot of harm in this country. Uh, you see a situation where a parent, in, a parent enters a hospital and freely comes out with the child. It's wrong, which means this hospital hmm. is not, has not put, it, put on enough security tips. Measures, hmm. Because if there were security measures in that hospital, it, this one cannot happen. Even this what the, the, there is a procedure when a newly born baby is, is in a hospital, there's hmm. a procedure to take the baby out. How manage that a, a woman will go in and come out with a baby without being on, on notice? This is very wrong. So there is something that we're calling on the government. Hmm. We should also call on the private sectors to make sure that they put security measures around their areas of work. Hmm. That is very, very important. Uh, our, when you listen to uh, the hospital administration, and they make us to understand that some of the cameras that they have there are not functioning. Uh, are they supposed to be reminded? It's maybe to review that. To say, it's, it's, it's very scandalous to say, sir, mm. that um, an administrator of uh, a big hospital, as such, comes out to say such a thing mm. uh, in the face of a situation that was caused by uh, negligence yeah. on the part of the hospital, because mm. we think that. Um, where you find people visiting quite often, mm. security measures have to be stepped up because you cannot tell who is coming there and the motives. For sure. um, why are security cameras not working? I mean, that is criminal to say such. In an environment where we should have security 24 and 7, mm. I mean, it sounds more like somebody knows something and doesn't want to come out to say it. Yeah. Um, because we, 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 we are no longer in, in that time where you could just say a thing like this and mm. people take it for what it is. No, people have to analyze this mm. and would find out the truth. Uh, what happened is quite unfortunate, but we thank God that the baby was found. Mm. But how many have gone that route and never came back? Sure. We are talking about a situation that is becoming almost a national crisis. Mm. Women suffer carry their babies, give birth to, and they, these children disappear, mm. and it ends like that. Thanks to the population, and I also think the forces of law and other, we were able to find this one. Mm -hmm. Not that's because there was almost an uproar across the national territory. Yes, both the traditional media and the social media were on it. Absolutely. Yes. Mm. Before the social media came, that we, we could say that the social media took the case first, mm. and then the traditional media picked it up. Yeah. We've had situations like this that went unnoticed. Parents have finally just given up, that they will never be able to find their children. I think that it is time for us to step up. Security, safety is first of all personal responsibility. Mm. Uh, if I own a structure, it is my responsibility to provide security for that structure. Sure. It is my responsibility to identify whoever comes in there. I mean, you, for example, you can't come into Canal Door. Even if they see your face every week. You can't come into this place without well, identifying identify yourself. It, yes. Yes. Hmm. Sometimes they actually just take your ID card. And I've had to, to talk to your security guys over there. I'm hmm. like, you see this face quite often. He said, no, it's a security <laughs> major. <laughs> I'm not picking up a fight with him. Hmm. I'm simply just being curious. Of course. Why are you, you know, scrutinizing? It's not hmm. scrutiny. Hmm. But that is what ought to be done hmm. in every public place. So I think that um, there was some sort of uh, negligence on the part of the hospital and they would have learned their lessons. Unfortunately, they had this way. Doc, uh, the day the baby was uh, discovered, we saw Baptist Christians singing and dancing at the premises of uh, the hospital. Was that just a personal joy or saving the name of the church? Oh, it's not, it might not be the issue of saving the image of the church, mm. but then equally believing that God works. Mm. You know, when the child was missing, a lot of people equally went to fasting and prayers. Mm. And that the child is found again, you still need to thank God that finally it happened. So which means that even if it happened to Presbyterian Church, Catholic Church, mm. even to the prostate and churches, it would have been the same thanking God mm. that finally we found the baby. And that is the strength of faith, that the strength of believing that the baby was going to be found. Mm. You know, until you are there, you will not understand what a believer mm. looks like. And so somewhere, Christianity too, 
has its place. Mm. And why others too might believe in their own Ngambe house, Mami Wata, Obanje spirit, mm. yes. others have their own gods. Mm. So when the baby was found, there was a need to thank God that we found him. Yes, he was talking when we look at the case of Vanessa Chantua today, a very big woman fighting to be a member of the Cameron Bar Association. Mm. The baby has never been found. And everybody has settled quietly mm. as if nothing happened. I believe with her becoming a lawyer, maybe this case might become a landmark case in others. Mm. She might institute proceedings again. She's not a big woman and can do that. So it, it, a lot of it we put on the negligence. Medical negligence in Cameroon has been enormous. Yeah. If you get through the records of books, if you read, you realize that we are talking of a missing baby. Mm. We are not talking of how many are dying mm. because of negligence at hospitals. So we need, it is a time for the Minister of Public Health or all the forces that are concerned with the health and the life of human beings to sit up and maybe why not? If you are not capable of providing enough security around medical units, don't mm. even open it. So what we are saying here is that there's a need for security of our babies and why not discourage the aspect of people using human beings for money. Mm. The constitution of Cameroon is against the penal code punishes anybody that yeah. uses human beings as a source mm. of wealth yes. and we must threaten that part of it. So you realize equally that the problem is not about the hospital but the state authorities yeah. and the implementation of the statutory provisions mm. that are geared towards the protection of the life of man. So the human right, one starts with the life, the right to live and the right to life must start from birth. So once a child is born, we start protecting mm. the interests of that child. Are the authorities doing the best? So we might not equally, if that is the case, we realize that the responsibility mm. might not only be that of the hospital that is concerned, mm. but all the state actors involved in the domain of protecting the life of man. The state actors uh, are there with their own blame. What about the other stakeholders? Like uh, every panelist have said here, you will discover that security first begins from your personal self. Yes. But then there is somebody who has the supreme rule, supreme assignment to mm. protect all the citizens of the nation. That person is the government. We cannot talk and pretend as if we don't know. If I just cited an example here that if a state hospital is going through what I just cited, mm. what becomes of a private hospital? And like Dr. Alko said, we need procedures in this country, just like we have been crying in the domain of education. If you are not a pedagogue, mm. you don't open a school. If you know that your hospital cannot have what it takes as security, because I think hospital is the beginning of life. Sure. That is where lives are given birth. Mm. That is where lives are taken mm. back to the, the, the creator. The creator, yeah. And it means that before you set up such a structure, you have what it takes to guarantee the security of everybody there. Mm. Now, coming back at the level of the stakeholders, we have not heard the Minister of Health come out to talk about this case. Except, no, he, uh, I, yes, he made uh, an outing on it. He yes, made he a, made a public statement. statement. Yes, he made a statement on it. Okay. Mm. I, meaning that the statement was not loud enough for all Cameroonians <laughs> to hear. Yeah. I've, I've, not, I've not heard it. Mm. But like we said, it is becoming a new normal in Cameroon mm. for stolen babies and babies that are lost or to, de to the hands of death mm. in, in the hospital. We have not forgotten the case of Monique Kumate that happened here in Douala. Yes. And we have been crying, thinking that such situations were lessons enough or were examples enough for the government to, to partner with the private hospital mm. so that even if they call it a private hospital, let it be under the monitoring of the state mm. directly. Mm. Because if the private hospital knows that I am being monitored by the state <coughs> and I have to render account to the state, they will sit up. Mm. Some of these private hospitals are run as if it was an individual's private mm. uh, uh, room where he was sitting there with his remote control, he, do, he, he does what he to can do. do. And undo. Yes, mm. but <laughs> if the state actually had a heavy hand of control mm. on their activities, their attitude would have changed. Uh, maybe before we move out, you have something to chip in as far as uh, the precautionary measures are concerned? Yes, uh, I would like to thank uh, the Almighty God and the marvelous thing that he, he did because the child, the thief that stole the child, Arrive with the child and the child. The supposed thief. Yes, the supposed thief. Yes, yes. <laughs> mm. uh, Arrive with the child and 
the health of the child was not enough. Hmm. It is when she took the child to a health center, a health unit, that the woman of that health unit yes. did the announcement. Hmm. We, shall, we should also thank that lady because she contributed a lot. If not, she, she would have connived with the lady and by today we would have not been talking about the, mm. the found child. Right. And uh, there is something I will say here that there are some women that are not blessed with the fruit of the womb. Mm. But uh, they should know that there are uh, uh, centers, orphanage centers, mm. that you can go there legally and adopt, and adopt a child. Mm. And when we say go there and adopt a child, it doesn't just mean anybody. You must show proof mm. that you can take care of that child. And it, you will be give, given that child throughout your life. And you make sure that you bring up that child in a good way and educate the child too. There are some things we will also uh, plead to the orphanage centers to make adverts enough for people to understand that citizens have the right to come and adopt children. Mm. We always say our adoption, but in, in Europe, it, we, rarely, we rarely hear of it here mm. in Cameroon. Mm. So it is time enough that the Minister of Communication allow chances to, to open centers to come on board, meet canal, they meet other uh, channels, talk about it hmm. so that people should be well communicated on that uh, matter. Our, maybe before we move to uh, our next topic, just a last word on this. Well, um, I think that we need to sit up as a community. Uh, it's true that the government has more of this to do, but we can also look out for one another. Hmm. Uh, let's sit up for one another and uh, the woman, like the woman where the, the baby was found, mm. I think she stood up for the community. She stood up for the woman whose baby was stolen and she took it personal toll. That's your contribution. I think Cameroonians can be very good people yeah. um, when they really want to be. So that's a very good example. I think we can copy all of that and look out for one another. Um, if I am in crisis and I cry out, mm. my cry should be a concern to you and you really want to contribute to making my situation improve upon. Uh, in the meantime, like I say, security or safety is first of all personal responsibility. Mm. Uh, we already know that it, it's becoming more of a crisis where people are stolen. Mm. People are kidnapped, children yeah. are stolen. Mm. So you should not trust any environment that is strange to you. The only place you can trust is your home, is your bedroom. Mm. Uh, stepping out of your house, you know that you are exposed to anything that can happen to you. Mm. Not to talk of leaving your baby. It's true. This woman believed that the hospital had much security to care yeah. for her baby. And she was already oh. used to the... So, the, the <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, but that is no longer the same. Mm. It's no longer the case until more measures are put in place to actually provide maximum security mm. for women, for children, and why not for adults, for Cameroonians mm. in general. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, just to in, uh, in less than one minute, uh, yeah, Doc. Very less. What I'm saying is the right to have a child mm. is a legal right. Yes. And again, for those who have not been able to fertilize or bear a baby, we are equally crying on the government that um, we have the Chantal, Chantal Pia Foundation, Foundation right? mm. present doing in vitro fertilization, mm -hmm. whatsoever. The price and the cost, so if it can equally be bought by the state, yes. to encourage those who don't have to visit that center mm. and have their own baby, rather than twisting and stealing babies in hospitals. It's getting enormous and it's, I say mm. it's a state responsibility. Mm. When such a center was built, it was to save Cameroonians. Mm. Why, after being built, there's a need to create that accessibility. Is it accessible to all Cameroonians? No. Very few Cameroonians have the money mm. and the money to get into such a center. So let's try to get information and the state make it available. Why not? The state can cover the cost. Mm. Once a child is born, we said it belongs to the nation. Sure. And so the nation has the right sure. to equally see that most Cameroonians that are unable to have children should at least have one. Yes, there are centers. Mm. But you know, there is love when a child comes from your womb. Mm. That has a different meaning. Thank you so much, uh, Doc. Uh, if you are watching us from wherever uh, in the world, you can contribute to our talking points through the number you have on your screen. Uh, a WhatsApp SMS or, uh, an, or a normal SMS. WhatsApp message or a normal uh, SMS. Do not call, please, because we will not be able to pick your call. And while texting, just make your messages short and straight to the point. Without any transition, we shall be getting to uh, our next uh, topic. Uh, and I will give the time to... Uh, ta for me, Franka Samuel, to clear the air, tell us exactly what is happening at uh, SOP 
in due subdivision. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Heisen, and thank you, uh, my co-panelists. Uh, Canada viewers worldwide, what is happening is something that uh, is, is not farmers' gracious land conflict. Uh, I think uh, we are living in a situation now that the security has become too tempting to the level that people take advantage of the crisis that's going on and doing terrible things. Mm. Uh, why giving different information out there? I will plead to uh, social media users that in, uh, as far as we are concerned in peace building in f communities, yeah. we, there are some information that you don't start talking before going to, this, to the level mm. or to, to the scene. Mm. You have to make survey. Make survey first, mm. investigate, and have information. Facts. Yeah. Facts. And uh, the security tips in Norway is so difficult in such a way that you cannot go to the, to, to the source of information. Mm. We are also begging to arm groups to make access for journalists, to make access for survey uh, commissions, to go to the source of information. Mm. If not, we are being fed with the wrong information on social media. Mm. And even the type of messages are being sent to the world are very, very abusive. And what I would say here is that uh, the sub matter is something connected with the ongoing crisis. Okay. Yes, and I don't want it that people should look at it as if it is a type of community against another community. Mm. It is not hate men against the boom community. No, let me say it here clearly. Okay. So, uh, the Wikuda president, which is the president that is taking care of all boom people mm. community, mm. I think they are in line to hold a meeting with the Moskuda, that's mm. Mororo Cultural Community uh, Development Association. Yeah. Uh, they will be holding a meeting, and I think the local communities, the local authorities shall be there also, mm. and uh, the government representatives sh shall be there, and from that community with traditional rulers, uh, people of goodwill and uh, rule models, pastors, imams, all those people, allergies will mm. be there, mm. representatives of the two communities. Because in a crisis management, you don't take any type of a person. Sure. You co collect rule models, people of integrity, mm -hmm. to handle it. So as I'm, I'm here confirming to you people that the meeting is in pipeline, mm -hmm. and I also thank the Lord Mayor, Abdul Kanfon of a sub new subdivision. Mm -hmm. He has contributed a lot to this matter. He has contributed a lot because since these things have been happening, he is always there with the population. And... Uh, uh, the traditional rulers too are trying on their own, and the funds of Mbom community they are on their way. Or they are trying on their own to see that they sit together, come out with a word. So I cannot say that we enter into it mm. because enter into it is a very very sensitive topic, a very very sensitive topic mm. because there are facts. You know, people do things now. Why? Because there are art laws in all communities. All communities have bad seats, and we should not make look as if the bad seeds are only for one community. Mm. No. And we should not think that it is farmer or hate men against the Gumbum community. Mm. And it is not okay. farmer grass, grass land as a problem, as I earlier said. Mm. So what I'm saying here, I'm pleading to co-panelists, to Canal Day International, to all social media users to refrain from using terrible statements. Because when there's a conflict, you don't you survey first before giving your statement. Of course. Yeah, and mm. don't not only anybody gives a statement. Mm. Not anybody. The authorities, the statement that comes from the authorities is authentic. Thank so you I so much. Thank you so much, uh, Emmanuel. Uh, we've heard him. Uh, these are people who are normally supposed to cohabit. Uh, it is true. He's making us to understand that it's not a, a conflict between headsmen and uh, the boom community. Yes. But then, people who are supposed to cohabit. How did we get here that? Some people at, at, the, at this point we are talking have already lost their lives. But before you uh, go, there's, there's hmm. a point that I should give, which is very, very important. This Kumbum community and hmm. the Mboro community, they have lived together for more than 150 years. Of course, of course. So just why... Like any other community in the Northwest. Yes. yes. Why just some... Hmm. It's now. Why yes. now? Yes, that's, that's the Thank question we're asking. Thank you very much, yes. uh, Hassan, for your hmm. question. <clears throat> you know, initially, I was coming here on the topic uh, farmers grazers conflict, conflict. in mm. Norway. Mm. And like uh, a bona fide son of Northwest proud yes. to be one mm. to have come from that region. 
and I even after this life, I will still be a Bamenian. Mm. <laughs> I grew up uh, like somebody who lived the farmer's grazier's conflict because my parents are peasantry farmers. Mm. And I grew up, I want to even think that where you come from, which should be in Konene or Boom, it has a long standing history of the farmer grazier conflict. Of course. And these are people who have been living together for a very long time. Mm. The question you are asking is very pertinent, and I think it is timely. How did we get here? The rule of law was broken mm. by those who were supposed to uplift the law. Those who were supposed to implement the law have become the lawbreakers, and that is what has brought us where we are today. When you say what you say, what exactly do you mean? I mean that those whom the state have given them the mandate, mm. the material, the legal authority, to manage such conflict have failed, I say, woefully. Let me take the situation of Boyu, where I come from. Mm. Generally, in our ways, we know of one man who is above the law. There's no need citing the name, but who is at the center, I mean, at the center of the farmers, grazers conflict in the whole of Norway. Mm. There's no need. Then, if you look at what poor farmers go through in the hands of the SDUs, the DUs, mm. the brigade commanders, the commissioners in Norway, in the name of farmers' grazers' conflict, you can sacrifice your life as Jesus Christ did <laughs> to free these people. <laughs> Thank you, Canada, because like somebody who has been a victim, mm. it always suffices in Norway that. One person has enough money to rear cows. Another person just has a piece of land. And a hole and a cutlass. And a hole and a cutlass. To farm. To farm, mm. to plant beans, mess. And then that person who has money, one day, on ranches, his animals, mm. his cows, to get into that farm, eat up everything. And you cough, you are locked up. A lot of innocent people in Norway have gone to prison. Simply because they cried out and they wanted to fight back. Mm. Those wealthy grazers who have all the financial resources to crack down on these poor people. But the rule of the authorities, like I said, the Jews, they call them, in fact, they shape the tear. Mm. They are the ones who are actually at the center. I will cite equally another place in Funo. Menta where a lot of people have suffered mm. till date because one person decided to take 80 percent of the land from peasant farmers mm. to allocate to his cows and you discover that part of a community was almost locked up and it became a commercial case for the authorities i've been talking about mm. because for them to get down to the field you have a problem you tender a worry, you table a worry at the, the SDO's office, which is the right quarter to do so. They ask you uh, petrol money mm. to mm. go down to the field. They ask to the wealthy grazer to go down to the field. What are the few sometimes? Some of them usually come back in handcuffs. The poor ones mm. who cannot defend themselves, mm. even though they are at the right, which is very sad. So, like I said, what has brought us where we are today yeah. is that. Those who are supposed to uplift or to uphold the rule of law have become the lawbreakers. And this is the law chasing us today. Uh, our, he gives the impression that uh, it's, it's, it's a case of stronger powers subjugating the weaker ones. Sure. Well, that's, um, I wouldn't say yes, I wouldn't say no. Mm. Uh, but you understand that since uh, 1919, when uh, Fulani cattle railing was introduced in that region, mm. Uh, we, we've had a moment of uh, peaceful cohabitation until in recent times when we've had um, this conflict you know, increasing. Mm. Uh, I mean, something went wrong. Something happened. Uh, we're here to look at what happened. But before we get into finding exactly what happened, it is important to understand that the, the cattle grazers need their cows to feed. Sure. And the farmer needs need to cultivate. Their, need their crops to grow. Need mm. their crops to grow. Mm. 
we're talking about two sources of livelihood that two people depend on mm. and they have one land to manage mm. uh it becomes a bit complex yeah that even these two people if you bring them on the table <laughs> to find a solution mm. they will still fight and no solution will be found mm. what that means is that it is beyond their capacity capability to mm. find a solution to their own problems mm. so someone in the place of authority needs to come in and, uh, yes mm. and that person is the state mm. the state owns all the lands uh, even some of us who have land, we got that from the state. Sure. The state decides that you get out of this place, you will go. Mm. Even with your document in your name, if the state comes for you, <laughs> you will go. So I think that it is important for the state to, mm. to take this thing serious. Mm. The administration can basically sort this out. We've seen in other communities where, and out of Cameroon, where we've had uh, uh, farmers, cattle, graziers, conflicts. Mm. Um, which are perennial. We've seen how they've attempted to manage the situation and we've had some positive results where the government decides to come in. Mm. It's usually not at the level of the deal. I try to understand these deals and even the mayors who cannot even say something uh, because it is totally beyond their control. Yeah. They can only have these things on mm. paper. They can only sign papers and make decisions. But to be honest with you, to resolve the issue between cattle grazers and farmers mm. it takes the executive pen of the president or the parliament to be able to bring this under control yeah so we're hoping that someday maybe parliament is going to sit down to talk about this and then find a solution mm. or we're also thinking that the president has the executive power can sign a decree to say that okay this part of the country from this place to this place belongs to these people mm. and their farm works or their cattles and this is what the state is going to do to support them we know that uh in some places like out of cameroon i will not mention any of that country yeah. where we've had situations like this the government stepped in and simply just say okay you you want to rear your cows that's okay mm. so you come towards this way what the government is going to do is we're going to create fields pastures for your cows for your cattle mm. your cattle is going to feed here and of course, these are hybrid uh, uh, pastures. Mm. The government supports to make sure that it's fertilized, it grows faster. So if you feed in a pasture for one week, before you know it, it grows back. So it was able now to sort out this issue. And they said, okay, you farmers, the day we find you farming around here, we know that you are the person are looking for trouble. Yes. And you farmers, you farm this way. Mm. The day we find the cattle grazers guys coming to feed their cows here, we will know who the problem is mm. and then the law is going to take its course. So I think that there has to be that political and leadership will on the part of the government to want to step in and put a stop to this. Um, doctor said uh, we can only attempt to resolve some of these issues. Mm. Uh, we cannot completely eradicate. But the thing that uh, human problems can be taken care of. Mm. If there is the will, the resources are there. <coughs> the will is there and, and the power the ability to resolve these things are there. We, we cannot, we should stop saying that certain things are beyond us. No. Mm. Problems created by man can be solved by man. Mm. And then, uh, uh, Doc, there is a local problem uh, put in place by most of the farmers because after uh, farming, uh, they take the initiative to at least fence around uh, their farms. But yet, even after doing that in some localities, they, the cattle still come and break in and then uh, destroy everything. So it's like... Uh, a situation where some people somewhere are doing something intentionally to see that you don't succeed in what you're doing. Oh, one thing is, um, I just want to say, it will come back to answer what I said, conflicts are permanent, mm. and that we can only do to resolve, uh, in fact, to manage mm. and not to resolve them. We manage them. So just imagine such a case that we should take precaution to prevent our lands. And you know these animals, at times they are wild. Mm. It should not be controlled by a single being. Mm. But at times when they are well fed, you find that just a rope can keep them within their limit. Mm. But when they are hungry, they will go above that rope. So you can imagine that. And if you say that maybe it's a willful problem, we will not say uh, it, it might somewhere be a pain mm. somewhere that they see the conflict of land first, those who own the land, those who control the land, and some others want to use the land. 
you can imagine it. This is a problem in the Northwest. Mm. There is an issue of limited land ready for grazing. Yeah. And which means land for grazing and others for farming. Mm. Which means that there is a conflict of interest somewhere. How do you protect the farmer's interest and how do you protect the grazier's interest? interest? Yes. And now at times some grazier's interest come to overspan above those who own the land. Mm. Somebody else owns the land. Someone is controlling the land. Another person needs to use the land. Mm. So get it. When somewhere scatters are settled for a very long period, the person starts behaving as if that particular land belongs to him, mm. of which we know very well. There are equally traditional rules, custom and tradition, even that when a forest is not occupied, mm. once it is within the limit and the ambit of that village, that forest, anybody entering there must seek the authorities of the traditional ruler yes. of that area mm. to even get a leaf mm. or take animals to that place. Is that what is respected? Now, like uh, Mr. Nium equally said, you find the interest and impact of the wealthy cattle, uh, cattle owners mm. who think that Anywhere there's a piece of land and their cattle are there, the land should automatically belong to them. This is where the coffee is. Mm. Do we need the villagers to beg land from graziers? Or do we need the graziers to beg the authority of feeding their cattle in that land from the villagers? Mm. The opposite will be true. We mean that the village own the land. Mm. And so those who are grazing within the land should know that they are using for the purpose of grazing and that when they are no longer there, that land should come back to the villagers. But when you claim not only grazing, mm. but transferring into people's Farmers' interest. I cannot plant crops and come in the next morning, it is destroyed. There is what we call corporate social responsibility, mm. which entails that if you are ready to keep cattle, you should equally be ready to compensate when they cause harm to others. Mm. At times, some people may even get into other domains. We talk of vicarious liability. Mm. That's the liability of your cattle <clears throat> over other people's mm. interests. Mm. So if you keep a dog and the dog has to bite a neighbor, you should know that you take off the medical care mm. and this should be the consequences of those who own cattle that whenever those cattle go above the limit and destroy crops they should bear responsibility of paying back to those farmers if this procedure is made known you realize now that farming or putting cattle some farmers will be happy because you don't even know how uh, crops are going to heal but if you take crops to that land and if you have to pay if you, mm. in mind you receive more better interest than it was if mm. he has to wait for the crops to bring out the healing mm -hmm. so this is what yeah. we are and it will mean, let me just get on, yeah, yeah, it will mean restructuring mm. of land management and conflict management mm. in this particular area where grazing is going on and we should accept with the modalities mm. that when you destroy, you should pay. And where you are interested in other people's interests, where your interest ends, that's where other people's interest mm. begins. Okay, doc. We need to accept. Okay, doc, thank you. Uh, time for me, he's making uh, a very pertinent statement here, destroying and paying. That is another crux of uh, the situation because many people who complain uh, they say the payment in court most often is so provocative that at times cattle will sweep your entire farm. Somebody will go to the brigade and be offering you maybe 50,000 francs. Yes. Uh, what I would like to talk here is that uh, communities know that at first we are only 7 million inhabitants or citizens in Cameroon. And with time, we've gone up to 28 or 30 million. Mm. Uh, there were some land given to graziers in those days. Mm. And with, with the growth of the population, we need to sensitize everybody. That is the, a very good point to handle. And this can be handled by associations, by NGO civil societies, traditional rulers, uh, core communities, have meetings, workshops, seminars, educate people. One thing with us here in Cameroon is that uh, we like applying a uh, type of ways on, on the citizens that is not without telling them what to do. Are you? And I, I'm trying to say that. I'm not getting you. Yes. Are you trying to say that the land is becoming smaller for farmers, but uh, larger for larger for yes. the, the, the cattle raiders? Yes. Okay. That's what I'm saying because the population is increasing, mm. and you will bear with me that. Uh, some thieves or some looters connived with the other natives to loot all the cows of the natives. And now they have gone as far as looting that of the Mororos and the Fulanese. Mm. So it is a deep-rooted problem. The hunter has they, been hunted. Yes. <laughs> no, not just the hunter has been mm. hunted. They have been doing it. It is a teamwork. Mm. And that teamwork has been working for decades. 
And that is the same thing going on, on now within the, the crisis. If this village is attacked, they make sure that the other time will be that, that other one. Mm. So it meaning we have to handle this thing. With, it is a sensitive topic that we cannot just talk here of and course, come very, out with, uh, yes. with, with solutions. Mm. But we are begging and pleading with the powers that be to create a commission, Truth Reconciliation Commission, in all communities, in all traditional councils, in all places. And if at all, I can plead with the Ministry of uh, Territorial Administration, Social Affairs, to look into it, to create a part, a department of Truth and Reconcil Reconciliation Commission mm. that will go right down to the suburbs. Mm. If not, we, the worst is still coming. Okay. I'll come back to you. Yes. Uh, uh, and the woman, I see you yes. uh, laughing and yes. smiling. I w he made some uh, mention of uh, local authorities. Yes. I want us to look at the way uh, our traditional authorities used uh, to function. Yeah, yeah. The funds. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm still in the present. Uh, the funds and the outdoors. Because most yes. often uh, they used to put their heads together and resolve some of these things. Yeah. What is happening today that they can no longer agree uh, so easily? You, 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 you know, things. The moment our traditional authorities became politicized, <laughs> a lot of things went wrong. Mm. A, lo a lot of things went wrong. Let me just give you a, 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 a very simple example out of your question. You know, few, some years back, if you touch one bike rider in Luala, mm. they never needed to know where, the other, where you were coming from. Mm. Just the fact that they were having a bike by them. They fell on you and they fought and they succeeded. Mm. When the government discovered that their energy put together was almost defeating the whole of the nation, what did the government do? The government looked for a way to come in with divide and rule and has created different bike riders associations. That is exactly what is happening with our chiefs now. You go to some tribes now, mm. the chiefs are okay with the CBDM, let's be honest. Mm. There are some who are against, and you will discover that these are already two camps automatically created. Should a problem crop up in such a village, mm. the authorities also want to know this chief does he belong to us? You see, I attended uh, uh, an occasion in Lok Besu here mm. in the in, in, in Shefiri, where the chief came out openly and told us in front of the Jew, that is able, he's ready to hand over anybody to the Jew who supports Maurice Kamto. This is what happened in a public place. <laughs> and those are things that we have been denouncing. Mm. So, coming back to your question, uh, politicizing our chiefdoms has actually made, has lessened the weight that those chiefdoms mm. used to have in those days. I discovered that a lot of people do not take them again very seriously. Just a quick one. When you look at the case of SOP, I want to tell you that when Anglophone crisis came up, something went wrong. Mm. There was a time, and we have facts to what we are saying, that the Mororo people were armed by the state forces to go after Amber Boys. That's an allegation. It's an allegation. I am telling you that it happened. Mm. No, it's not an allegation. Yes. I am telling you that vigilante. We are saying what? Yes. We are saying what we can prove. We are saying what we can prove. Mm. It's not an allegation. Mm. And Konene and Saf were, were was one of the case studies that we did in Norway. Mm. Remember on the field. And at that time, we were crying to the authority that look, arming these people to fight Amber could be a good idea. Mm. But how do we disarm them after fighting Amber? These are the causes to the taking place in South. At that time, we were shouting that the military have been trained. They have military pedagogy. They can operate the gun. And after that, the psychology can be treated easily and they down the guns. But what about these guys who have no idea of gun pedagogy? Mm. How are we going to disarm them after that? So I am still calling on the state that in managing state conflicts, we should know who to use, how to use, when to use, and how not to use such people. These are the spilled over effects of those vigilante groups that were armed. And maybe later on, whenever disarmed, and without authority in them, 
you see inter-community attacks coming up. Mm. We are talking today about SOP. We are not very sure that SOP is the first and that will be the last. Mm. That's why we have to bring these things on board so that at times we help the government. Some people might not like it, but the government likes it because they will not come out to tell us that they are waiting for your platform. Mm. But you will see the actions in the days ahead. Some of them will be disarmed. If I thought there were still some of them, if the guys are going to find Amber. Mr. Wa, we are looking for the solutions. It shows that dialogue, maybe within the community heads, have failed. Uh, are there needs for serious legal actions or legal uh, measures to be taken from now henceforth so that we should be able to arrest this situation? Because many people are taking advantage of the ongoing crisis uh, to fear that they can just attack uh, communities the way they want. Right. Um I think it's time for us to consider bringing in um, the powers that be um, that can put this situation under control. Um, who is the MP of that area? Who is the senator of that area? I, I think we've, we've not heard them say anything. They've not reacted to this. Mm -hmm. and, and it's making Cameroonians begin to ask a lot of questions as to who really is behind this conflict. Mm. If the people that were supposed to be the first to come out to say something, either asking people to calm down or um, proposing the way forward, or perhaps taking this case to the, 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 the upper chamber so that it can be discussed there hmm. and solutions be brought. We've not seen none of them react to this. This is an emergency. Okay? On media. Okay. So no, we're talking about media. We are on a media platform, mm. and we're saying that if there is any reaction to a public emergency, it should be on media so that the public can consume this information. Um, I should be able to watch the news and tell my grandma in the house. No, we're talking about media here, sir. To tell my grandma in the house that, oh, okay, the MP of this place has reacted on Canada, mm. on maybe other media platform. This is what they've said. There was a press release. Oh, this is the action, this is the way forward, mm. the MPO, the senator of this area, um, they've, they've taken. I'm not blaming them. I'm simply saying that, Asa. I'm saying this. Uh, oh, no, I'm not or saying or otherwise. No, I'm, not, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm not contradicting what you're yes. saying. You're saying that they've reacted, but mm. we need to see them in public. Because these are, these are the leaders that we're looking up to. And we are saying that if the traditional rulers of these places where we've had this conflict, mm. we are not using... We are not we are not focusing on sub sir. So excuse us if yes. you feel that. Yes. yes. Because it is not only in sub that we've had this crisis. Mm. Um, I come from Santa. We've had some of this crisis there. Yes. Love it again when you are around me, Chuma. Exactly. Yes. Yes. In So don't feel yes. like we are focusing on sub. Uh, but we we are saying that there is a problem with leadership mm. in general. Mm. If if lives and properties are affected and leaders that are in charge of these communities don't openly come out either to propose way forward or to calm down the people when i say come out sir you are not coming out of your house you are coming no, out to the media with a voice. yes with a voice yes with a voice you stand right. up for the people absolutely yeah. uh, not either taking side because leaders not don't take sides yeah. right in conflict situations in conflict we are taking sides absolutely are neutral yes. so, so are neutral. very neutral yes. but of course quite objective. Mm. We are looking forward to seeing these actions based on visionary and sound leadership taken in the days ahead so as to prevent more of these unfortunate circumstances. We're talking about sources of livelihood destroyed. As a result, I mean like, how do you justify that? How can you even stand mm. in, 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 in an environment where the are intellectuals to talk about this? when? Concrete actions have not been taken. Try to learn. Uh, to, to. Uh, so my point, my point, my point mm. is, my point is, uh, traditional rulers seem not to be able to contend the situation. Mm. Yeah. Local administrations seem not to be able to contend the situation. Can Yaoundé react as fast as possible, please? There is okay. reaction from the Lord Mayor of us Ndu subdivision, that is his ministry, municipality, mm. right. and uh, other reactions also with the Wimbom. Uh, uh, president, that is the president, president general, yes, right. also yes. forward I've, Rogers, I've seen it. Have seen it. Yes. So there are pipelines meeting that has going. They will, they will be going on very soon. Mm -hmm. So 
they will, everything shall an be handled. Emergency. Yes. When well, we talk about destruction of properties and lives, yes. it's an emergency. Those, the emergency those, meetings, meetings, no, no, those right. meetings are held overnight. Yes. Those emergency yes. meetings. Uh, uh, gentlemen, time is that not on our right. side, yes. please. Maybe just take this uh, message. We have many of them who will not be able to take uh, greetings to the panel. I think the responsibility of the state is to educate and sensitize the full and where to rear cattle and respect the rights of uh, the farmers. That is coming from uh, Minang Siri from Yaoundé. I have more than 100 uh, of such, me such uh, messages. Uh, and the maybe, state cannot work alone. Yes, they uh, need associations doc, to work with. Doc, we are moving out of time. Yes, you decide. Your last word on this, please. Yeah, one of the greatest of all which I said is um, there is a need for a proactive commission mm. in land management in that particular area. Mm. If I talk of proactive, it should be permanent. Permanent is decided that it should be capable of foreseeing where problems might come up tomorrow relating to land management. Mm. This proactive commission should include all stakeholders, mm. including the bororos, the farmers, owners of land, users of land, mm. and those who think like the traditional authorities. We should make them permanent in every village or at times at every division mm. so that we consult them and notice where to graze, where not to graze, where farmers are going this year, where cattle owners are going this year. The moment there is a strict line to control activities in every community, in fact, there is a need for local community management mm. when it comes to land. And such commission should be recognized by the state with the full power of giving instructions and modalities on who should farm where or graze where. And so he who so ever goes against this law should be capable of paying. Like I said, we should bring in the aspect of corporate responsibility. Thank you so much. The carous liability of those animals need to be taken care of. Thank you so much. And we should not equally forget the cohabitation. It is a responsibility. Those yes. who are there, they have the right to yes. cohabit. Yes. And uh, we hope that normalcy returns to SOP very soon. As he indicated that uh, some talks are going on, we hope that the situation will be arrested. We cannot equally forget the situation in Magba, where we hope to see a return to normalcy in that part of the country. If you miss out on anything as far as this program is concerned, the rebroadcast is on Wednesday at 11 p.m. Till we meet again next Saturday. Stay blessed. Tell them to take photos at once from the computer.